It can be breathtaking to watch an osprey fly right over your head. things about Hawk Ridge is that we are able to blend our bird research happening in action with that environmental education component. We ran into two people sitting on chairs and it was Dr. Pershing B. Hovsland, we called him Jack, and Molly. He lived in Lakeside and he had observed over the years what was going on up here and he was very influential in getting the city to stop letting it be a shooting range. He would pick up piles of hawks and put them for the city to see what was happening to the birds that were migrating through this area. And that's kind of how it all started. If you're trying to protect a piece of land, that's not the easiest thing to do. And it's not a huge piece of land. There were two pieces to it that came from the county, a core area and a buffer area, but it comes up to 365 acres. Jack Hawson tasked me to find out about the land, and we found that if we wanted to buy the land and it would have to be on a bid, we did not want to do that. We searched, we found that the city could negotiate with the county for the tax forfeit land. They gave us a loan. Then we, that is Duluth Bird Club, would give money to the county and buy the land and then give it to them. Now, to make this work, you have to have a classification of a nonprofit and it was the Duluth Bird Club. It was just a club. They had to incorporate and become a non-profit. Non so they became the Duluth Audubon Society. Hawk Ridge was a committee of the Duluth Audubon Society, and we managed it, and then it became obvious that the best way was to have uh, scientific people managing this. It stayed very small. The people in town didn't even know we existed or what it was. The community, I think it's important because it is part of Duluth. It's a chance for the public to see something live and you know, realize that it's not stuff that's a real animal. And you know, they're all wild animals. You don't realize that they look pretty tame, but they're all fiercely wild animals. The people who have been running it for the past couple decades have really made it much more inclusive, much more popular. Birds are fascinating. You can't ever learn everything there is to know about the bird. Some of them are experts at catching blue jays and robins, and others are experts at catching warblers. You can hear the waves right behind us. This um, Lake Superior is one of those main features that influences migration. And so all along the North Shore, we have that great geology, that rocky shoreline. So the boreal forest is an important ecosystem system. All of northern Canada comes across and then it comes right down to Duluth and everything to the west is prairie. So we're actually getting to study birds that are actually coming out of the boreal forest and there's nobody else in the world better suited than us to study that biome. We're at the beginning of the Mississippi Flyway and 60 to 75 percent of the migratory birds in North America come through here. That's incredible. Having the data from Hawk Ridge being consistently collected through our formal migration counts and our banding research does contribute significantly to look at things like population. There's something happening in that environment, where they're coming from or where they're headed to, that is hurting their population. The birds that we study tell us about our environment. You know, in the 60s and 70s, when bald eagle populations, they were uncommon here. Many of the populations of raptors were hit very hard by the DDT era. That's why we do some work with the EPA lab here. You know, it's all about all of us, not just about the birds. Hawk Ridge, we've been observing and counting and banding and educating about birds for 50 years. 50 years of data has taught us some things. Year after year after year, you start seeing patterns. You're going to have ups and downs with birds. Hawk Ridge has also been a kind of a mentor. Frank Nicoletti knows more about 
expanding and the techniques and identifying spots on the horizon as to what species they are. Frank did all accounting by himself for at least 10 years. Frank Nicoletti was a huge part in helping me develop my project. I'm working on northern hawk owls, which are a boreal species of owl, that this is sort of their southern edge of their range. And some of the skills I learned of capturing uh, birds and being able to take data and put transmitters on them have come from Hawk Ridge. I've been given so many opportunities in my 40 years of studying raptors. Now it's time for me to get back and that's what I'm doing. I'm getting all these grad students, I'm getting all these interns, working with volunteers. I want to give back. That's what I want to do. Often scientific research is done in laboratories. This is a place where people can see what the research is. We are able to blend our bird research happening in action with that environmental education component for all of the visitors. We have a wide spectrum of education programming available. Everybody from preschoolers all the way to college students. I ended up working with the kids cart. The children who once they're banded know that they can come back and be recaptured and they just, you know, love to know that they've grown an inch or two inches. Investment to Hawk Ridge primarily does come from the support of our amazing members and donors. And so that is one of the ways that we have continued to sustain our operations. There's lots of volunteer jobs at Hawk Ridge. There's always the need for contributions because we are trying to make this world-class professional. A wonderful place to be involved with, and I'm happy I've been able to be a part of it for so many years. Mm -hmm.